I'm in the Pacifica plug-in hybrid, and I've thought for years, ever since this van came out, this would be a potential perfect family vehicle as you're able to do all your daily errands on fully electric for very low cost operation. And then for longer trips, you have the gasoline V6 in here uh, to provide excellent highway efficiency and also that you know, no range anxiety, right? So for years, I thought that this sort of powertrain would be absolutely perfect for a family. And after testing this Pacifica, is it that good? Is this the perfect powertrain for a family for not only everyday use, but also for the long road trips you have planned? Today we'll find out. Taking my kids to school, I've been driving to mainly electric mode here. And the great thing about this plug-in hybrid system is that you can get up to 32 miles of electric range. We'll test that out here in a little bit. I'll tell you what I've been getting uh, this week. But with the gasoline motor, uh, you have three propulsion devices in here. You have two electric motors, they're all in the front. Um, one mainly for regen, the other one may mainly for propulsion, but they can both do both of those activities. Um, and then you also have the gasoline engine for the longer range. So when you combine all that together, you're able to get 260 horsepower um, and it is connected to CVT. There's no all wheel drive uh, available here on the, the hybrid. However, you can get all wheel drive with the V6 models. Automated liftgate here and like any minivan, they make a mockery out of any large SUV just because of the amount of space we can have in here despite having three rows of seats assembled. Now inside here is their charger and behind that is gonna be a fix a flat kit. So there is no spare tire here on the Pacifica hybrid, but these seats are pretty easy to assemble. They are fairly heavy, but they are also easy to take down. Since I have a bunch of kids, I'm always keeping these rear seats assembled. Also a strange place for the close button is right up here Doors open nice and smoothly. Again, the buttons are hard to find um, unless you are absolutely looking in the right spot because it is kind of a smooth finish here. I'm always running my hands on the inside to find it, but yeah, I guess I would probably get used to that over time, but let's go ahead and get into the back seats. And yes, in this pinnacle, we actually have these nice pillows. The girls have been throwing them around and pillow fighting with each other. Um, we do have USBs back here, USB-A, USB-C. I like how big these rear windows are. We have nice sunshades, uh, something like the Sienna, for example. The windows have gotten so small over the years. So I like how the, having this big window back here, even though it doesn't open up. We have vents overhead, nice soft suede uh, headliner, panel roof you can see. Um, and we don't have USBs on this side, unfortunately. We do have a cup holder over there. Now, leg room for me in the middle is decent. Of course, I could stretch my legs out, um, but for kids in the back, this is probably gonna be enough leg room, even though these seats are all the way back. I feel like this has quite a bit less room to go through between the seats compared to my 2013 Sienna. So it's not the most roomy for passengers in here. All right, let's get in the second row. These captain's chairs, beautifully quilted, but can't really appreciate them with car seats uh, and booster seats on them. Now let's talk about these screens because, well, there you go. Um, it is an Amazon Fire sort of software and I'm always getting AT&T and which never loads, but tell me I pretty much need to join Pacifica and uh, yeah, it's it's been very difficult. The DVD player in here, which is a Blu-ray right up there, which is perfect for parents so they can swap out discs on the fly. The problem is, is that it doesn't always work. So yeah, look, I tried to get out of it. That screen pops back up. Um, yeah, and I can do all this. The cool thing is I can do all this with the screen up there. So I have Bluey playing, but the problem is also a lot of the time, um, I have to reroute the audio up there so they can play on all the speakers because it doesn't do it by default. Now, of course, you could get headphones that plays through back here, and especially with the, these aux ports, which are really nice. Now, you can also plug in mobile devices. Since this DVD Blu-ray player isn't the most reliable, I could probably plug in my own, but I'd still be interrupted by that AT&T wireless sign-up thing through the Amazon Fire-based software. Luckily, we have USB-C uh, plugins back here as well. Uh, now, I can also select different inputs over here, but there you go. I'm greeted by the AT&T sign-up thing. And yes, I do have other, uh, gosh, I have other apps here that I can use. I can't even get out of it. Isn't that crazy? 
it's it's yeah so i recommend not getting this dvd player system or blu-ray player system at all save the money because it has been a headache it works 50 percent of the time and then if i do get it to work sometimes that join pacifica screen pops up over the working video even though i'm not using the internet so it's been frustrating uh, for me as a dad trying to get these dvds play playing for the kids in the back Again, vents overhead over here. Uh, we have that rear climate control up here at the top. Uh, we do have the remotes for the Amazon Fire on each screen. And then I can pull this out for not only cup holders, uh, but we have a, a nice storage tray down here, but it's a little wobbly. All right, getting into the front seat. Again, beautifully stitched caramel seats here, kind of like a peanut butter color. And a material soft touch here. Good stitching. I like this wood grain, polished wood grain around the handle. Looks pretty nice. Your fuel cap is in a strange place. And speaking of caps, here is your charging cap. Pretty easy to get to. Uh, I'm able to charge this in about four hours with my modest level two, but it can probably charge as fast as two hours. Well, let's start the steering wheel. It's extremely smooth. And even the stitching is pretty impressively done here to match uh, this, the, the color of the seat. So I like the steering wheel. I also have buttons on the back to adjust the channels as well as the volume. Now this is basic screen up here, but I like having it on this where it shows me my electric range that I have left, 22 miles, but it also shows me how far I've driven an electric in my last trip, how much has been on gasoline. I have a digital speedometer there. There's no head up display, which is a bit unfortunate, uh, but I do like the analog tack here for power and for charge. I rarely get it over 25%, even on fully electric. So electric motors here are plenty quick enough to get this vehicle up to speed on with modest traffic. Anyways, we have heated and ventilated seats that you have to activate through the touchscreen, also heated steering wheel, and the ventilated seats in here, I feel like they're AC. They're one of the best ventilated seats I've ever tested. So I have a wireless Android Auto going on right here. It works really, really well. I haven't had any issues with the Android Auto in this this vehicle it hasn't had any hiccups connecting now you can see this is glossy black and i have glossy black down here you can see it co collecting a lot of dust and the lighting this time of day is not giving it any favors uh, we have a twist dial for drive select it's not my favorite i've gotten used to it if you push down you can go into low mode which is going to give you um more of a one pedal sort of driving but it's not true one pedal so i just keep it and uh and drive all right i want to get back to the screen yes climate control and, and volume knob i have all that that's pretty functional here but i want to get back to the screen i want to get out and i like having these buttons down here fixed so i can get into the basic software because at times i do want to get into here and then it just kicked me out but going back to vehicle i can check out the 360 camera see that lady's shadow walking by it's pretty high resolution um, i can change the camera vi uh, view angles which is pretty cool I really appreciate the 360 camera. It's really well done. And then you have the fam cam. So I can see what the kids are doing. And in fact, I can, oh, I want to see what the kids in the back see. Oh, I want to see what Maggie's doing over here. So love that feature. I'm sure parents would really like it as well. You just have to climb through the menus to be able to get there. Um, also under the vehicle tab, uh, you have the, the hybrid mode, the, what the electric motors are doing, what the battery is doing. As a hybrid nerd, I really appreciate this screen as well. So I like the software in here for the most part until um, I get to the media. And the media is very laggy. Like I said, it's slow to play back there on the DVD screens. Um, but at least I can control it up here, but it's been very, very difficult to work with. So you click rear seat to con connect to the rear seats back there. Again, loading. And then sometimes it pops up here. Uh, sometimes it doesn't. I can click launch source and you can see that lag. It's uh, and then click Blu-ray and it should pop up again. Sometimes you have to multi-click and it didn't select this, the right source that time. So you guys are getting an idea of how difficult this has been to work with in the back seat. Now I can also press the button at the back of the steering, which is kind of like a mode and it's going to go through the different sources here. So there you go, I got Bluey playing. I can use the back of the steering wheel to select that, but I have to go back to the rear seat here um, to see what's going on. And again, I can't, I'm, you know, I can maximize the back screens too. Let's see if I can get out of that screen, pressing back. Okay, now I finally have 
the screens match. Well, actually, yeah, there we go. It's And then they don't play at the same time. So one screen is always in front of the other. It seems like my kids like to say, oh, they'll say, oh, my TV's in first place. So the kids make a game out of it, but they're not synced. They're not playing that great together. Now, it'll also play on the front screen, but once I start driving, it'll pause while it keeps playing in the back screen. So anyways, I know that's a really long, detailed explanation of uh, the DVD player in here. It's been a headache, uh, but it, when it works great, it's great. The problem is it doesn't always work as intended and it's about 50-50% of the time I get it to work how I want it to. All right, down below a little tray for wireless charger. We have a bunch of USBs and an aux port. I love how they include the aux port. I like these cup holders with these little rubber inflated pieces it keeps the drinks in there dvd tray well that's what i would use it for as well as a 12 volt lastly harman kardon sound system it sounds really good in here you're just going to have to tone down the bass quite a bit because it is over bass from the factory um, we also have power folding mirrors which i didn't mention but that's what you should expect in a 60 plus thousand uh, dollar minivan after driving the pacifica for a week really haven't needed the gasoline engine at all on my trip meter here uh, at least when I reset it, I've got 58 or about 60 miles now of fully electric and just two miles of gasoline assistance. So if you're able to plug this thing at, at home overnight, you're pretty much never going to use gas for your daily errands. It's quite incredible. Um, and I did some cost breakdowns and it's about five cents per mile on electric uh, compared to about 12 to 13 cents per mile uh, when you're in hybrid mode using gasoline. If I compare that to a competitor like the Toyota Sienna Hybrid, that's around seven to eight cents per mile. So this is definitely the cheapest to fuel if you're able to plug it in at home most of the time. And as long as you're not taking longer trips, uh, so you can keep it in electric mode pretty much the majority of the time. All right, let's talk about what this thing is like to drive. Well, it is mostly really smooth. However, there's, like I said, two electric motors. And it seems like when you get off the throttle, you hear a clunk. Well, it, there is a clunk, there's no doubt. When you get back in the throttle, it's like it's re-engaging one of those electric motors. It's probably the bigger drive motor. And so you always have that and you notice it, especially at lower speeds when it's not overcome by ambient noise or, or road or tire noise or wind noise. So uh, when you're up to speed, you really don't notice it but there is a clunk every time you get on and off the accelerator pedal. But if I need to get heavy into the gas pedal, um, it's, it's seamless, right? We have a CVT, so I'm just gonna put, uh, well, I, I need to get a little bit more space. There we go, put the pedal down. The V6 actually sounds quite good, even though it's a bit droney, it sounds a lot better than, let's say, the Sienna with the two and a half liter four cylinder. It's got a nice deep, note to it and it has a bit of performance edge to it i would say compared to maybe the sienna probably not uh, the uh, honda odyssey with that v6 now this is actually down on horsepower compared to the v6 pacifica the non-hybrid pacifica and once you run out of electric power fuel economy is about the same between the two um, and part of that is because we have this large uh, 16 kilowatt hour battery, 12 of it is usable, and I'm getting 38 miles per charge, which is quite impressive, um, to be honest. Like, it's rated at 32, but I live in flat, warm Florida, and I was able to get 38 miles of pure electric mode in here to stretch out my efficiency. Ride quality in here, I feel like, is pretty average, um, and handling in here, it's okay, you know, it doesn't have a lot of body roll. It handles way better than my 2013 Sienna. It feels a lot more tight and stiff in the turns. The steering is completely removed. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't feel like I'm connected to the road at all with the steering wheel. The steering wheel feels great in my hands, but there's just no feedback going on. It just almost feels like a video game with no force feedback. Um, the brake pedal in here is very, very wishy-washy. The first couple inches of travel, it feels like, doesn't change in resistance. I'm not getting any more brake power the further down I go in the pedal. And then I hit this wall where it like doubles the brake force. So the predictability of the brake pedal is tough to live with, especially at slower speeds. It's a bit unsafe in my opinion, trying to get this to park because you get some resistance, some resistance, and then 
boom, a whole bunch more brake force with just moving the pedal just a little bit more. Uh, it's been tough for my wife in here. She's been getting car sick a little bit um, because the braking is just hard for me to predict and bring this van to a stop um, with any sort of consistency. As you guys know, I'm a huge fan of minivans here on the channel. Anything with sliding doors makes me so happy, especially as a family man. Is the Pacifica Hybrid worth the money over its competitors? I'm gonna say no, it's really expensive. The cheapest way you can get it is around $50,000. This being the Pinnacle is over $60,000. It's just not worth it. You're not gonna see that sort of savings in fuel economy, especially compared to something like the Toyota Sienna. But you're gonna get a very efficient, I think V6 in the lower trims and save about $10,000. That's a lot of gas. And it's a, probably gonna be a smoother experience. You're not gonna have this funny brake feeling um, that we have in this hybrid, which struggles to blend the, the regen brakes with the friction brakes, it feels like in here. So yeah, I believe the, the standard Pacifica V6 is a better vehicle than this e-hybrid or plug-in hybrid. Um, I have, you know, I want, I want this powertrain, but at, at lower price points. It's just really expensive. I mean, the, getting your feet wet with this powertrain is equivalent uh, to buying the top of the line Sienna or Odyssey or probably even Carnival at that point. I'll see you guys in the comments. If you made this far, I appreciate you. Smash the like button, subscribe for more minivan reviews. Just got back from Japan and that's the land of minivans. Vans everywhere, small, medium, large, tiny. Like it was just a, a, a dreamland for a van lover. But back in the States are hardly any and they're more of a rare sighting it seems like. But anytime I can test one here on the channel, it's an absolute pleasure. Um, and yeah, the, the Pacifica is a good van. I just really would prefer it in the V6. Surprised I'm saying that because I typically like hybrids and plug-in hybrids over the, the, the alternative, but it just doesn't seem like it's fully ironed out here uh, with the funny brake pedal, as well as the you know uh, intrusive of the engine, or should I say the electric motor coming in and out, uh, especially at uh, low speeds, it's a bit clunky. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. Have a great day, peace.